Good morning. Welcome to Sunday School. I'm glad you are joining us on this video. And I wanted to share a little bit uh, from the Bible about a lesson we didn't get to today in church, but I wanted to share this story. It's called The Widow's Offering, and it's in our Spark Story Bible. Jesus sat down outside a temple and taught the disciples about how to share. Do you see that rich man in the fancy robes? Jesus asked the disciples. They looked around and saw him. He twirled his robes when he saw that they were watching him. I must be very special, thought the rich man. The man in fancy robes stopped in front of a money box outside the temple. He slowly reached into his money purse and pulled out several coins. One by one, he held them up to the sun so that they flashed for all to see. It's time for me to give to the poor, he said very loudly. The coins made a loud clang as he dropped them into the money box. Now Jesus asked the disciples another question. Do you see that poor old widow? Jesus whispered the question because he didn't want to scare her. She looked this way and that. She tried to hide in the crowd. She bent over the money box. Clink, clink. Her two tiny coins barely made a sound as she dropped them in. And the old woman reached her hand into her pocket. It was empty. Quietly, the poor woman shuffled away. Did you notice? asked Jesus. The man in the fancy robes gave just a little bit of his riches and showed off a lot. The widow gave the only two coins she had and kept quiet about it. She shared everything. She's the one who gave the most. And this is how I want you to share. This story about the widow uh, shares a great thing. It tells us about sharing what we have with God's people. And it's a good thing, certainly, that she gave. She gave all she had. Wow, she gave so much, right? But one of the things I want us to think about in this story is, why should she have to do that? Why should she have to give her last two little coins in the temple? Wouldn't it be better for that rich man who put all his money into the coin box to share maybe a little bit with her? Well, she didn't have anything else to live on. One of the things that God teaches us is that we are part of a family together. We share what we have with those who maybe don't have as much uh, as we do. And that's a good thing to remember as we go about our lesson today. I'm going to put up on our website a coin for you to color. So that will remind you, I've got a coloring page of a coin, and I'll remind you about how we can share what we have with God. And, and God doesn't really want our coins, right? No, but God wants us to care for each other. And even if we don't have a lot to give, a lot of money to give, maybe we have other ways that we can share with each other. Maybe it's by singing a song. Coloring a picture, holding someone's hand, you know, safely when your hands are clean and washed, right? Because we're doing that very carefully these days. Maybe it's just sharing your heart or listening to someone who needs to tell a story or tell you about their day. And if it doesn't seem like a lot, we find out it adds up pretty quick. I have this little pig, and uh, it's from our ELCA World Hunger Good Gifts. And uh, I leave this in the office so people have some extra change. They can just drop it into this little box, and I've had it for a while, but, man, it's getting pretty heavy now. I think a lot of people have dropped some coins in here, and that eventually, when this thing is totally full, we can use it and send it off to ELCA Good Gifts to buy a pig. Why would we buy a pig? Do we need a pet pig? Is it a pet? Going to live in our bedrooms? No, this pig is for people who can raise that pig. For, uh, for a farm to provide food and uh, to serve their village or their family. So this is an, a way that we can serve people to share a little bit from what we have to make a big difference in someone else's life. I think that's really important, don't you? One of the things we hear about in the story is the temple, and I wanted to share a little bit about what the temple is. According to the Bible, King Solomon built the temple as a replacement of the tabernacle, the place where God was said to be with the people, which was kind of like a tent. But King Solomon said, I'm going to build a big temple for God. King Solomon wanted the temple to be permanent and a central place of worship, kind of like our church, right? And it was built around 950 years before Jesus was born. And it was destroyed just about 400 years after that. 
when the Babylonians came in, and then it would eventually be rebuilt and destroyed again about 70 years before, uh, 70 years uh, after Jesus was born. But the temple was very different from our churches. This was not just a religious building. It was also a place where everybody in the whole area from all over the country would come, and it was known as God's house. And this was treated with great respect. And we act respectful when we come to church too, don't we? But the temple also served as a financial center. This was where all the money came from all the villages and towns. People brought all their money to the temple. That was their way of worshiping. And they gave loans, they changed money out, uh, and it helped in collecting taxes too. So that all this stuff was going on in the temple. And when Jesus came to the temple in Jerusalem, he, he said, this is not what this is supposed to be. He threw over these money-changing tables, and, and he said, this is not what matters most. What matters most is loving God, and the way we do that is by loving God's people, by loving our neighbors as ourselves. One of the best ways we can care for our neighbors is by sharing what we have with them. So think about it. Maybe write a comment or write an email to, uh, to us here at the church. Let us know. What's a way that you can share what you have with your neighbors? Even when you can't maybe physically be together or your school is closed right now, what's a way that you could share something with a neighbor? So I look forward to hearing your responses. And uh, I want to thank you for joining us for this. And uh, we're going to have some activities and coloring pages that we're going to upload on our website so you can join in and continue to learn about sharing with God and God's people. Let's pray. God, thank you for giving us neighbors to love and to serve. Thank you for helping us to give from what we have and for giving us so much. Thank you most of all for the gift we have in Jesus. You've given us everything we need. So we pray that you would keep us healthy and safe and strong until we can all be together again. In Jesus' name, amen. Peace.